was the first candidate to throw his hat in the ring for uh, the election for mayor of Pasadena. Uh, we talked with him way back in July of last year. Terry Tornick is here with us now to discuss his vision for the city uh, and uh, uh, for the final push in the runoff election on April 21st. Welcome, Councilman Tornick. Thank you. What is that vision? Oh, I think uh, Pasadena has a reputation of being a, a place that is incredibly diverse and is really a model for other cities that, that they've tried to emulate. And I think that uh, we've been slipping a little bit for a variety of reasons, and I think that people would like to be assured that, uh, that we can restore our place as, as really a, a model for other cities to, to try and um, match up to. Well, I, I think the hardest part about that, of, of you know, continuing to be a leader, is uh, some of the funding um, going on. I mean, you talked about in the last debate that there is, is not a lot of funding. Um, and then, you know, you put the embezzlement scandal on top of that. We're, you know, losing $6.4 million and didn't know about it after 10 years. H where's the accountability? Well, that's <laughs> a bunch of different things in that question. I, I think that... Um, Accountability is critical in terms of reassuring people that uh, we are good stewards of their money. People don't like to pay money to government under any circumstances, but they get particularly angry if they feel that you're not uh, taking care of it. Um, our economy is doing better. We have more revenue coming into the city, and that's a, that's a positive thing. The problem is that there are tremendous demands on every dollar that we have, and uh, we have to be very careful in terms of how we allocate those dollars. But I, uh, in terms of the $6.4 million that were stolen, um, happily, I think we'll get more than $5 million of that back through insurance. But it's really, the bigger issue for me is that it's symptomatic of a, of a larger problem, and that is that uh, we're really not performing up to the standard that I was referencing, and we need to, we need to restore that level of Do performance. Do you believe that there is a level of trust certainly that's been broken between uh, management uh, of the city and the citizens of the city. My question then is where does the buck stop? Does it stop at Michael Beck's desk or does it stop at the mayor's desk? Oh, I think it's a shared responsibility. I think that uh, Michael Beck is the chief executive officer of the city and, and he's responsible for hiring and managing uh, the activities. Uh, but I think we all share in the responsibility and I think that we all need to work together to to make sure that, as you say, that the accountability is restored so that people can be sure that we're taking care of business at City Hall. Well, you know, and um, going back to Michael Beck, I, I think one of the things that is a little upsetting to me is that, you know, um, we only recently as citizens have found out about the, the scandal, but it's been out there for a, about a year. Um, so why isn't there enough information to know whether Michael Beck should stay or go? Well, frankly, a lot of because uh, the uh, district attorney did not want to reveal the, uh, the details uh, until she was ready to file charges um, and not jeopardize the success of the criminal investigation and prosecution, uh, we were somewhat hamstrung in terms of what level of investigation could happen uh, because it would have tipped our hand and alerted the bad guys that, uh, that we were looking into it. So you say it's been out there for a long time. I mean, there has been some knowledge of it. But the really thorough investigations had to wait until charges were filed so that, uh, that we could put this guy behind bars. Well, let me cut to the chase, and, and, and then we can move on from the um, embezzlement. Uh, just as a citizen sitting here, um, my feeling is the guy who's in charge of the city who didn't see that $600,000 a year was missing ought to be gone. Why is he still in office? That is what, uh, as a voter, I'm wondering, and I want to know from my mayoral candidates, is the first thing you're going to do when you get in office, fire him. Why do, I have to, why do we need more information? What more information do we, do we need except that uh, some funny business happened on his watch and he should fall on his sword? Well, I'm, I'm sorry you feel so aggrieved. Um, sometimes acting swiftly is not acting wisely. And I think that uh, what we need to do here, the reason we've got these investigations and the reason we have a citizen task force is because we felt we needed to have a really thorough investigation of what was happening rather than just a knee-jerk reaction. I went to the task force meeting uh, just before the debate the other night, uh, and we've got a group of citizens, uh, 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 citizen experts who are looking at this, and I think after they complete their work, we'll have a much better understanding of what we should be doing. And frankly, 
I like to be fully informed before I take an action as dramatic as firing the city manager. But well, you're willing to do it? If, it's, if it seems appropriate, absolutely. I mean, he serves at the pleasure of the council. He doesn't have some long-term contract. Um, and if we discover that, uh, that he really had uh, dropped the ball in terms of, as you seem to have concluded he has, uh, in terms of supervising the people that he should have been, uh, then, then he's gone. I mean, he did come in at the tail end of, of, of this whole scandal. Um, it, it started much before he did come into office. But um, moving on, uh, we're going to stay with funds, but moving on to the police audit that was uh, released and also uh, the protests uh, from some of the officers talking about, you know, the, the police department is about to implode as they're saying um, from their point of view and they're saying there are not enough funds for training I know the audit covers a, a time period uh, that predates uh, you know Chief Sanchez mostly but this whole issue of not having enough funds to hire and train officers is, is still lingering where do we find the funds well it's interesting you know the the um, the officers want more money all the all the city employees want more money. The officers want a lot more money, um, and frankly, because they, they could get it elsewhere, correct? Well, they, they, you know, we're not in the the top three uh, of of paying, but we never have been. So there's a little bit of a distortion there in terms of of how we size up against other communities. Uh, but in terms of of funds being spent on public safety, I think it's important to understand that in 2009. We spent 44% uh, of our budget on public safety, and today we're spending 50% of our budget on public safety. So we haven't given short shrift to public safety, uh, but it is clear that we haven't kept pace with some other cities in terms of what they're paying their officers, and we have kind of a perfect storm because there are so many people. It's an aging police force, both here and elsewhere in the region, so there are a lot of policemen uh, retiring in Anaheim and Santa Ana, uh, and Santa Monica and they're hiring and they have always paid more than we do but it's now impacting us in a way that's not typical so I think I think you need to drill down a little bit and really understand what's happening and and whether this is a temporary condition or a long-term fix and while I do think we need to allocate some more resources to public safety uh, it's pretty clear that we're not going to be able to meet the demands that uh, that are that are currently on the table councilman I want to uh, go back to something that happened uh, during the debates uh, when the moderator uh, asked you uh, a question about uh, comments from another councilman that you uh, uh, were perhaps arrogant and autocratic and uh, you made a joke which some people got other people didn't about not having beaten your wife um, and then it raised the the the, sh uh, the hair on the, the the necks of some some people out there you care to respond to that well, I mean, the question was a loaded question and, and uh, was unfounded and really was character assassination. I was so surprised and offended, frankly, that, that a journalist would pose a question in that way that I reacted in a way that perhaps might have uh, um, been insensitive to some people's perceptions. For that, I'm apologetic. But I think that the people that pounced on it are people that have a, a, a horse in the race. So I think it's a little bit of a distortion there. But if I have offended anyone, clearly I'm apologetic. Well, you know, I mean, you know, questioning if that should be out there. I mean, even when the Pasadena Star News, you know, initially endorsed you um, in, in the primary election, you know, they had made note that there are some people who, you know, who might bristle at some of the ways that you react, but they still endorsed you. Um, but what was your reaction when in, in this runoff they've now chosen to um, endorse Jackie Robinson? Well, I think, uh, I think that there is some uh, uh, practice in Pasadena of being very polite, which I share. Uh, but I am more straightforward and outspoken than, than maybe some people are used to. Um, my concern about endorsements now is limited to what the voters say on April 21st. Uh, the endorsement that matters. That's the only endorsement. But, but Councilman, honestly, what, uh, when, when you have a hard job to do, you come into office and uh, embezzlement, the police department is upset, uh, neighbors are upset about what's happening with the Rose Bowl. Is there anything wrong with being uh, uh, autocratic? Well, I, think, I don't think I'm autocratic, but I am direct um, and outspoken, and I think, frankly, some of what ails us in City Hall um, could use a little straight talk. Uh, so I'm not apologetic about it. I mean, I am what I am. Um, and if people elect me, they should know that I will speak directly and forcefully. And I am an advocate uh, rather than uh, just a, you know, a participant. So I, I think there will be, if I'm successful, there will be a change in style. 
uh, at City Hall. Frankly, I think that uh, City Hall could use it. Well, we, th we do thank you for coming out here uh, this early in the morning. Uh, I, I know that's a little bit tough, but we hope to see you again. Uh, regardless of the election uh, results, we hope you uh, continue to come visit us and uh, update us on what's happening. Thank you very much. All thank right. you. Thank Good you. luck to you. If you're looking for a tasty breakfast meal, our next guest uh, has it for you. And Chef Jessica McClear will show us how to make a tasty stuffed brioche. That's next on Taste of Sunrise.